Kevin Martin here, your UT admissions guy. In this workshop, I've recreated and reproduced, with permission, a real UT Austin student application, and I want to walk you through what an admissions reviewer might be thinking as they're reading and trying to assess which admission score to assign this applicant. We'll look at the essays and the resume and discuss the results at the end. I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for joining this application workshop where I recreate and reproduce a real student's application and walk you through what an admissions reviewer is perceiving as they're assessing and trying to determine this student's personal achievement index score. So this file is a little bit different than others and I'm going to spend more time discussing background information and a little bit less time of the student's file itself. I always introduce my videos by saying that you, admissions reviewers are looking for signs of adversity or hardship. And this is an interesting case because the student comes from a college educated family, goes to a pretty good high school, but their family income is quite low. And in fact, they ended up receiving a full Pell Grant eligibility. And Pell Grant is the um, federally funded gift aid program for low income students. And the cutoff is roughly less than, um, I think it's less than 40 or 45,000, $50,000 a year, depending on your, the number of students in the household and so on. And so this is a low income student that goes to a, a pretty good high school. And it's pretty uncommon for UT to receive applications from high achieving students who report a low family income. It's something like two thirds of all incoming UT students have at least one parent with a graduate, a graduate degree. And I think less than 15% of students come from families whose income is less than $80,000. So to have a low income student who is scoring a 15, 20 on the SAT and also in the top 10% of their class is fairly rare. And so that context is important because it will come into play with the admissions decision that the student ended up receiving. So they've applied to the Cockrell School of Engineering Mechanical for their first choice, and they're also attempting to apply for Plan 2. Initially, the student did not apply for engineering honors, um, and that's something I'm going to talk about a little bit later because it came into play. But they did apply for Plan 2, so we'll look at the Plan 2 essay. Um, they've also taken you know, a, a wide offering of STEM courses, and so that's something reviewers like to see for their fit for major. And we'll take a look at their resume. So we're seeing right away an extensive list of individual and team band accomplishments, including um, being the 15th chair of Texas All-State in the largest um, division. Um, so yeah, this is something that sticks out right away, even though it's not engineering related. It demonstrates leadership, uh, commitment, and follow through to an individual activity. Um, clearly, the student has some interest in band. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it for so long. And it's nice to see that they've... Um, you know, achieved at a high level. They're also participating in their school's engineering club, some engineering competitions. They're also in Rotary, uh, went to a few summer camps and academies. They played baseball as a freshman, and they also work for their family's estate sale company. And so this is part of the context to their application. So the family, as far as I know, they left their jobs or um, no longer were employed. I don't remember the context. Um, and again, your reviewer is not going to know the context, but the family had started their own estate sales company. And estate sales are when uh, families are trying to liquidate their assets and sell things. And also it's common when uh, people pass away and they need to sell the things that the family had used to own or the person used to own. And so that's what an estate sale does. Um, I used to go to them actually when I was a UT student because it's a great way to find um, like inexpensive but usually pretty high quality stuff. So if you're a, a incoming college student who wants to find um, nice furniture like quirky lamps or just random things, you can find estate sales on Craigslist or Facebook groups. They're actually pretty cool. There's a bunch in the Austin area. And then we see a couple of different volunteering, although none of them are extensive or deep. Um, so let's just jump straight to the SAA. And so we're starting with early childhood, sharing a nice anecdote, um, spending time with, out, out at his great grandmother's house and looking up the stars of their dad and, you know, asking, you know, questions that kids might ask to dads at that age. And um, they demonstrate a nice facility with language, a variety of different sentence structures. They're, um, you know, getting directly to the point and um, establishing early on with 
a theme that will come through a variety or throughout their essays of being kind of contrarian or anti-establishment or a little bit unconventional and saying that he shares those qualities with, with his dad. And so when we're talking about demonstrating a fit for major, you don't necessarily need to talk about things on the resume. It's perfectly appropriate to talk about the characteristics or interests or curiosities of your parents and how they've imparted certain lessons or stories or values onto you. And so we're hitting a little bit more context about bands. So I mentioned early on that, that they had achieved at a very high level, but then we learn here that I'm struggling in school or questioning why I remain in band, um, following conversations with his dad, and sort of talks and walks the reviewer through a little bit about what was going on there. And they had initially joined to find their place to socialize and... Right, and so they encountered some early adversity in terms of their their, their placement within the band, um, and they talk about their various promotions, and then once they were sort of at a certain tier, that's when they began to receive the sort of mentorship and instruction that elevated them to eventually being All-State as a junior. And then what's interesting is, although they achieved at a high level, they talk about their decision to leave the band. So sometimes that will be a relevant theme or criteria for students to discuss in an essay if they have left one activity for another or if an activity wasn't serving them or it wasn't a good use of their time or was too much of an opportunity cost and didn't allow them the energy or effort to um, you know, focus on their studies or do something that they really enjoy. And so then some of these anti-establishment or kind of contrarian or authority defying themes are coming out in their uh, application and essay. And so we're getting a very nuanced and complicated portrait of this student. I'm linking it into some uh, larger themes. There's a famous book written a few years ago by Adam Grant called Originals that suggests nonconformist and creatives disrupt systems and produce innovation and meaningful change. And so with Plan 2 specifically, they're looking for these kind of quirky students who are asking the bigger questions, who are examining some of the core assumptions or things underneath the surface. And that's what this student is doing here is they're, they're, they're using this SAA, of course, to set up the rest of their application, but also they're making an argument directly to plan two that there's someone that isn't willing necessarily to walk the line. And you're, he's giving an impression to the reviewer that he's, you know, someone that could be a potential pioneer or visionary and, it's certainly an interesting and thought-provoking essay, so if, I recommend pausing this video if you want to read it in more detail, um, because I think it is it is quite different, and it's not the typical, like, I've done great at band, and let me tell you how awesome I am at playing the tuba, um, but it's something much more complicated than that, and they've also managed to weave in these character themes, but also their interest in math and science, which ties into their first choice major of engineering. And so here we get a more conventional uh, initial response to their application by talking about their various engineering courses that they've taken, some skills that they've developed, exposure to 3D printing and CAD. But then here we get more of these anti-authority and contrarian themes coming out with a discussion of their teacher who was, who was quite an influence on them. Talking about an influential teacher or course is one way to demonstrate your interest in your first choice major. And just as the student in SAA connected their um, experiences with band to larger issues, it seems like this teacher influenced them as well because they connected engineering to economics and global warming, biology, and so on. And this happens occasionally at schools. Um, so there was a misunderstanding with a student. The administration suspended the teacher. Dozens of classmates and I lobbied the administration for his return. Um, the teacher actually didn't end up coming back and it seemed like, you know, this student was obviously disappointed and it might have been quite a loss for the school. Um, depending on the circumstances, it's hard to say. But again, there's a, a lot going on here for a relatively short essay. And again, we're seeing some of the different dimensions and character of the student coming out and how they're perceiving these social structures and um, bigger picture questions beyond just the content itself, like learning engineering. And so I think by taking a little bit more of an unconventional approach to major, they focus in the leadership talking about the same general class of things. And so what this student relayed to me is that they showed their application to some of their classmates and the classmates said, oh, why are you talking about Mr. AG in your major and your leadership? And what the student feedback mistake, mistake that they made is that it's possible to talk about the same thing, but approach it from different directions or expose it from different angles or shine different lights on the same kind of story. And so the reason why it's effective to talk about 
um, the engineering class and the specific kind of challenging project is because it shows an engineering and analytical mind, which isn't something that had come out yet in the SAA or the major short answer. So without this leadership essay, there would be kind of a missing hole in the application that doesn't really persuade the reviewer that the student is serious about studying engineering. Um, so they talk about and, and identify the different um, challenges and obstacles in this marble building project, mar marble sorting machine, uh, and then there's a nice resolution at the end of how they, they finally solved um, one of Mr. Agee's riddles. And so uh, it's don't so don't shy away. For example, if you uh, have a very deep commitment in speech and debate, it's totally appropriate to talk about your individual accomplishments in one essay, and then maybe like the debate environment or atmosphere in another, for example. And so don't shy away from talking about what things that might superficially seem the same at first glance. You know, these are two totally different essays that are getting it at different parts. And engineering class and Mr. Ag are simply the vehicle or lens with which to view and filter these experiences. So I think this is a really cool essay. I really like this one a lot. And it's one that the student didn't initially think about writing. It was only in our phone call where he's like, yeah, so my parents run this estate sale company. They don't really have that many clients yet and it's just getting off the ground, but I, but I help them out when I can. Uh, and I was like, oh, just tell me about that. And he's telling me about the estate sale company for half an hour. And that's how this essay developed. Because again, it was, it's common where students will say, I don't have anything interesting. I don't know what to talk about in my diversity. Like I'm, I'm white from the suburbs, I'm male, I'm straight. I don't, I don't know what to talk about. I don't have like a diverse friend group necessarily. And it seemed to be in a super cool essay, just talking about like all the crazy things that they've seen um, working for the estate sale and just having a job where you're interacting with a you know, wide variety of different people from the public uh, and just like the different objects and materials and things that they end up finding. Um, so there's a, a lot of nice vignettes and anecdotes here. Um, and again, it's one that's worth reading in a little bit more detail. And they tie things together at the end. Everyone, regardless of their ethnicity, age, or religion, has unique preferences, techniques for haggling, and most importantly, ways of expressing thanks. And they say they haven't traveled outside the U.S. They're not some like internationally inclined student or family. Um, but these sort of exposures, you know, influence them to maybe study abroad someday. And me and the student have actually talked extensively about teaching English overseas because that's something I've done in my, my professional life as well. Um, so, yeah, it's just a curious student. Again, these are all themes that Plan 2 is looking for. And so on the same theme about sort of contrarian views on things, this is an interesting take on a common theme that students talk about in their essays with regards to social media. And they don't commit one of the flaws that many students commit where they talk about social media consumption or technology in the third person. You know, they say first person point of view. I obsessed over my Snapchat streaks and even gave someone else my password to maintain my streaks. Um, and then I met someone who told me that they didn't keep streaks. It's obvious in hindsight, but it was a revelation at the time. She questioned, if you don't actually talk to each other every day, then you shouldn't have a streak. And so by extrapolating this kind of um, encounter, they talk about these larger questions about ethics and technology, um, you know, citing a famous ethicist named uh, Tristan Harris. And, uh, you know, using a quote here very strategically by saying in much fewer words these, you know, capturing these broader themes about how we just simply don't know how these technologies influence our lives. And then at the end, they talk, they talk about how Plan 2's um, kind of multidisciplinary education of kind of the humanities with the technical classes can help them um, navigate these, these social questions related to our technology use and how it you know, impacts us at an individual and communal level. Uh, so again, this is a, a nice essay that fits in with these overall themes about kind of questioning what it is that we're doing and consuming with reference to their own personal experiences. In these five sentences here, we've gotten five pretty different um, aspects to their personality and dimension. This will um, certainly resonate with the Plan 2 reviewers, talking about their um, favorite composition, um, talking about a, an independent study English project that they did that hadn't come up elsewhere, um, talking about some of their views on music and mathematics. And so, yeah, just some nice sentences here. Um, nothing that's particularly game-changing, but um, wraps up an overall very strong portfolio. So I haven't um, put the admission score probabilities here um, because it was fairly, you know, it's a fairly different case, right? So they did end up gaining admission to mechanical engineering. I've already talked about the context in which they were applying, that they're a Pell eligible student. And 
a few things. So honors programs have very few low-income students. It's predominantly wider Asian uh, and predominantly upper income families. And so these, these programs are looking to enroll students from diverse backgrounds, including low-income applicants. So even though they're white and they go to a, um, a suburban high school, um, they're obviously good academically in the top 10% of 1520. But what ended up happening is they gained admission to Plan 2, mechanical engineering early, and they gained admission to Plan 2, I think, in late January. And um, so obviously that they were qualified to get into mechanical engineering. I think they likely got a 5 or maybe a 5.5. But then something interesting happened where they got an email, I think in early February from the engineering honors program, because he hadn't checked the box. Engineering honors doesn't require anything extra like essays, and they invited him to apply to the program. And so this student ended up getting admission to engineering honors with a scholarship. Um, so with that renew renewable presidential scholarship, um, pending that they, that they stay uh, Pell eligible, um, the student will end up enrolling at UT Austin on a full ride scholarship. So this is one of those kind of rare examples of a student that demonstrated financial need that um, also was achieving at a really high level that whose essay standing alone, you know, really appealed to plan two, but then in particular to be recruited by engineering honors um, that doesn't happen every day. And so I think if the student had reported a normal income, I think they would have still, or like a you know middle to high income, I think they would have still gotten admission to mechanical engineering. I think they probably would have still gotten admitted to plan two, because again, they have these kind of quirky things that plan two is looking for. But I think to explain the invitation engineering honors with a scholarship, you know, you have to look at this, um, this broader theme about programs, very highly selective programs that have like few or sometimes no uh, low income or need based students. Um, so I think that's what's happening there. They have to distribute scholarships and they want to give priority to students that, that need that money to enroll. And so um, ended up being a really interesting uh, admissions journey for this particular student. And I apologize for not putting the score probabilities here, but I think they almost certainly got a five, uh, maybe even a six, depending on the way that the reviewer assessed the um, context of being a low income student. So it's a little bit different case. And again, this isn't like any hard or fast rules, but just to demonstrate that uh, things can play out a little bit differently if a student is coming from a background where they're rural or, you know, from an environment that doesn't always suggest um, someone who's academically excellent and involved in a variety of different activities. So no strong conclusions to draw here, but an interesting file that I wanted to share. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can find more helpful information at texadmissions.com slash blog. And in the information section of this video, I provide links to a free online email consultation if you're interested in potentially working together and links to my book, Your Ticket to the 40 Acres, and my premium course, Getting Into Texas Universities. Thanks, and I hope to see you again soon.